The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on the 16th day of June. This is Thursday. We're looking at the Dow down 718 points at 29,947, making that 30,000 uh, psychological and uh, technical level mm, uh, kind of, <laughs> it's a little too high now. It was before it was a little bit lower down. Now it's a little higher up. Anyway, most importantly, what we're looking at here is the technicals are still very weak. There was a chance yesterday that if the market held that, now let me just go through this uh, slowly. Within the context of the market, overall market, one of the reasons why for subscribers, we've raised a lot of cash. We're trying to put, the work, put it to work on a very short term basis, but mostly we, we're just almost like day trading. I don't like that at all, but for some people, they want to do the day trading. But mostly, I've wanted people just to step aside. This is a, when we say um, it's different this time, and people roll their eyes, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, we always hear that. It is, of course, it's different this time. You've had a 40 year bull market in the, in, in the, um, in bonds, and all of a sudden, uh, the start of the change about uh, a year ago, and now you've got an issue where just look at. In fact, let me do this right away because you need to see something. It is, uh, it, it is startling. Let me show you. I'm going to go to the chart I showed uh, yesterday briefly. I'll do it again today. This is the chart that I show subscribers to my opening call. It's the weekly chart of the 30-year T bond the 10-year T-bond uh, yield and the five-year cyan color T-bond yield, the FVX. It's also got the um, wood iShare Global Timber and Forestry ETF, and it's got the, high, uh, the uh, Philadelphia Index housing uh, chart, weekly chart. Look, let's go to the right first. At the corner, this is down 17 at 343.20. Philadelphia Housing Index. It's it's now it is a one to one to the downside from the high to the midpoint of the rectangular range that it was in for well over a year. Look at the Wood iShares Global and for, uh, Timber Timber and Forestry ETF. Now that extension that I showed yesterday, where I brought it down a little bit, it's right there at the low. If this gets taken out, I have to start looking at this. Uh, I, I'm just I'm just this is a preamble to that, and I have to go to the the um, nine period exponential moving average and go from there. And that takes it down to the twenty period moving average, which is at. Uh, let me just see if I can see. I can't read it, so I'll just guess. I'm saying it's at about seventy two, and we are right now at seventy five point uh, fifty six, or well, eighty six. Sorry. And look, I keep raising this. I can't believe it. This is the bonds. This is the five-year, five-year way above the 30-year. Why would anybody even be looking at, oh, huh, that's not a number, 34.08, uh, 34, so the white, which is 34.72. That is unbelievable. 34.72 in the 30-year T-bond yield. The cyan one, this is 3.472, right, for the 30-year. The cyan-colored one, that's the five-year FVX, is trading at 35.96. 3.596 giving you over a point better yield. <laughs> I mean, really, uh, over a point, yeah, 30, well, yeah. So, and, and the 10-year is still up very sharply. The 10-year is up. At uh, at a high, did uh, 34.83. So, this is quite phenomenal. I don't think I've ever seen. No, I have, but not for years, not for decades. Actually, have we seen anything like this? And just to get a bigger picture of it, have a look. 
We were once in back in November of 2018 at 34.55. It gets smoothed out, so let me just double check. Okay, call it 34.47. Um, that was in November of 2018 for the 30 year. And if you go all the way back, look at this. If you go back to 2014, you're up at these are the yields. 38.4, no, 38, 39.76, 3.976. I can go back further. I, I wonder if I've still got that yet because trade stations changed things. Back uh, in uh, June of 2007, you were at 53.27. Amazing, huh? And then, of course, we could go all the way back to, uh, I don't have it anymore, but I used to have it all the way back to the 1980s. Yeah, 47, 4 4.7, 4.856, 4. what is that? 4.843. Wow. I mean, really. Yes, we're way under it, but that was a different time, right? Okay. I just wanted to show that. I want you to give, get a sense of the um, obstruction, all the things that are now going against the market having a really good rally. Short term, my suspicion is, if you're looking at the short term, there are a lot of stocks that are starting to show the kind of, um, the kind of value that a lot of fund managers will say, hey, now we've got to start looking at value. Um, but that doesn't change the fact that you've got a really, a, a very serious problem so let me get out of this, and I want to go back to our story and look at all the different indices. We've got time today. Um, there are a lot of questions with different stocks. I'll go through the stocks. Most stocks are going down. We're looking at, uh, as I say now, the Dow's down 714. The S&P is down 114 at 36.76. Uh, 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 the technicals are very weak. Stochastic's down at 7.77. This is about where you'd start to at least attempt some kind of a bounce. Let me just look at the uh, the 10 minute chart for a moment. See the 10 minute chart made a lower low in leg E after that sideways rectangle formation take out to the low side. I just wanted to show you a couple of things here. And yesterday after the Fed speak at about 2.20, there was a, a, an attempt at a rally, in the, an immediate attempt at that two o'clock time frame to rally. Then the market went negative, then it went a little bit positive, and then it went sharply negative. And the Dow and the E-mini, in this case, the E-mini uh, uh, September futures went down to 37.23.50. And then rallied within about uh, 60 minutes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 50 minutes, rallied all the way to a high of 38.43.00. Then what happened is it pulled back and had a peak A, a peak of a phantom, Chapman Wave Phantom Peak B, a C and a D, right there underneath the previous high, and that was it. At 2120, that was at nine. Is that uh, off the bell? Yes, uh, that was uh, 920 last night, made a peak D, and then it started to come down, and now we're at the low. We've gone from that high that was made up at a 38. 27, oh sorry, 38, 38.30s down to 36.77. In a time of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I thought we were back at Dow's down at 680. We're at about 20 past 10 after this kind of action from yesterday into last night into this morning. This is about maybe we would start to see some nibbling, some some action going on on the upside uh, we'll see if that can hold. That's the most important thing. It's not a matter of, of, of nibbling. It's a matter of getting in. We've got Marvin in Orlando. Hi, Marvin. How are you? Hi, Basil. How are you? I'm good. Um, so. so I just a little commentary, and then I wanted to get your opinion on something else. So I'm sure. I think the, the Fed has created the biggest asset bubble in the history of the United States. And uh, what they did is now they've pricked that bubble, and that bubble is collapsing. And I think if you look at the, the, the trajectory of the stock market, this is the biggest, fastest, I would say, correction and time-wise that we've ever seen probably. Um, so I just wanted to get your opinion on that. And then um, and where do you, I've, I've bought XPXU, which is a short ETF. So where, where is the support on the S&P, if you, if you can kind of give an idea where it could end up going, you know, if it continues going downwards? So, Marvin, I just need to ask you, I missed, you see, you bought what? Oh, SPXU. Uh, S, uh, STXU? SP is in Paul. Uh, SP. Oh, SPXU. Okay, yeah. I know that one very well. Uh, that is the SPY, that's the ProShares Ultra Short S&P. Um, so this is very important. It's in a leg C at this particular point. I'm giving it the benefit of, of the doubt. I could call it an alternate count. But this is for now. I, I, did you just buy it or you've had it for a little while? Uh, I bought it about 1650 Oh, wow. That's fantastic. All right. So, folks, what we're looking at, I'm going to give this an up arrow. And that's going to say that it should continue higher at least for the next couple of days. So what we're looking at, folks, is the SPXU, the S&P, uh, this is, so the U, uh, let me see, is for ultra short. Okay. And it's trading at 22.37. It's up $1.82 of 8.9% uh, just today. And it's gone from the most recent low, which was down in the 15s, around about the beginning of June. And here it is at 22.40. So this is a fantastic move. The I was watching this, I was looking at this the other day, and uh, I have it in leg D in the weekly chart. That doesn't mean to say it has to turn down, um, but it is usually the inverse. If we go to the SPY and see where the SPY is, 
whoops, we go to this by click, click. Okay, so this is what I'm going to suggest in terms of you, you're the one that did the trade. I have to congratulate you. It's fabulous, a fabulous move. And congratulations on holding even through yesterday, which looked for a moment like um, the, the market wanted to extend even more as short covering uh, really pushed, pushed the market higher. Most importantly, what I'm looking at here is that on, in a monthly, if I'm looking at the SPY on a monthly basis, the way that it's taken out, this is mid-month, so we can't talk about it as if the month is closing right now. It's not. It's mid-month. Anything can happen for the next two weeks. But as it stands right now, it's within a moment of having the monthly chart, nine-period exponential moving average, close underneath the 14. It wasn't doing that just recently, and now all of a sudden it's doing it. That means that the daily, which is in a sell mode, the weekly spy, which is in a sell mode, and the monthly chart, if it becomes a sell signal, because that nine period crosses underneath the uh, 14, says that there's an incredible amount that the spy has to make up to get that nine period to reverse, reverse back up over the 14. So it hasn't happened. That's the outlook. What I am going to suggest to you is uh, two things. SP, uh, what are we looking at? SPXU. Uh, yeah, what we are looking at at this particular point is at 22.31, if there is any rebound in the market at this particular point, you would have to have the volatility index give you the, the next clue. The volatility index is at 31.91. It hasn't taken out yesterday's high. And it's underneath the high of four days ago. And that to me is a clue that what I'm looking at underneath, and one of the reasons why for subscribers, I, I, I've wanted them to, to we, we, we saw long positions um, yesterday. I wanted to get back into one that we were taken out of. Um, it had a fantastic move to the upside. I wanted to get back in today. And one of the reasons is, I, when I did a lot of homework over the last couple of days, I saw so many individual stocks that were trying to hold and actually start a move to the upside for the very first time they were fighting against the downtrend. So it says to me on a, on a very selective basis, you've got the very broad market trend, correct. But on, a, on an individual basis, there are some stocks that are starting to show some signs that say, hey, we really want to we want to get out of this this down mode. We want to start a move to the upside. So as I said, at 10:20 this morning, that's about the time that we should see some kind of a reaction to the upside. So if you're asking me my my opinion on what you do, I'm a little hesitant because you're the one that's been in this for so long. If I'm correct, that this is a C and it should still go to D, or there's an alternate count and it's an F. The only thing I would say to you is. Just for money management, if you want to take a little bit to off to reward yourself, that's fine. But you would have to see the SPXU actually take out yesterday's low, which is at 19, 19, or maybe it doesn't have to actually take it out. But I would say below 1970, I think that the Dow and the S&P and the QQQs will start a, a counter trend move to just try to fill the gap some upside action on a very oversold condition. So that's all I'm saying. But I don't really want to change your, your longer term outlook because the big picture says that regardless of how many big bounces we have, the bumpy ride with testing the lows, I think is going to continue for a little while. It doesn't even have to be lows, but testing the lower level. So I think you're correct in the longer term. I'm just saying on a very short term basis, my, my thinking is, you know, it's not a bad idea. Take a little bit off, reward yourself, but I would keep the core position. I don't know how that sounds to you. Oh, no, appreciate the advice. Yeah, that sounds very good. Um, but you think we're still going to be making lower lows, and uh, eventually you think this will end up where? Do you, is, is there any way to make a prediction like 3,500 or 3,400? Or is that? So one of the things I've been looking at for a long time is that the very often when the S&P has its big correction, I 
very often over the decades. So it means that it doesn't happen very often in general, but if you look at it over the decades, a fifty a fifty percent correction is not out of the out of uh, is not unusual to see. So thirty five hundreds becomes some kind of a target, and um, a lot of the time, it depends on what the action is all around, whether or not it's going to be um, just a, a one time test, or whether or not. The low that's made isn't actually a V-shaped recovery low, but a low that says, you know what, we could bounce, but we're going to do more. To Can you hold on a second? There's just a, one other thought that I wanted to add to it. So I, we'll be back in a moment. We, we, we'll be back. We filmed the market in Florida, uh, and Florida and we filmed about the spot. Dow's now down 16. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Chart allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Hi, folks. We're back, and we're on with Marvin uh, in Florida. So, so, Marvin, there are a couple of things that I wanted to mention. Uh, one is, regardless of whether there's an undercurrent of buying, because there are a lot of fund managers that are now looking at the value side of the market, the conditions are really uh, unusual in that we've got rates going, as I was mentioning before when I was talking about the rates, the rates are really, uh, it's the speed, the velocity, and the potential momentum for the rates to hold their big gains. That's the thing. I don't know what's going to bring the rates to lower levels just yet. That's number one. Number two is, if you look at crude oil, yes, crude oil is pulling back, but in the big picture, if you, if you, if you try to gather the information that's out there, that's talking about um, you know, crude oil and the, the, the lack of, of oil that's available right now. It's out there, but I mean, available to consumers. That's that's really a big problem, and the, the, 
the the price i mean i saw uh, yesterday i saw a, a gas at six dollars premium six dollars but some people are talking about regular at six dollars that is that's a huge i mean that's you know when any administration talks about um uh, uh, the the um the working class and how we're trying to to uh, to to you know help the middle class and the working class if you have rates uh, if you had to raise interest rates um sorry taxes people would be really upset but oil at five six dollars that's like an and i'd say like an income tax if you're talking about general uh, commodities so i don't want to dismiss that and i don't see how we get out of that right now so i'm saying that in the big picture the s and p short being short the s and p especially from the level that you're at um i i just think that that's that's a prudent thing to do and all i'm saying is that just in terms of money management, and you get to a point where you say, wow, I didn't even expect that. It's a bonus to even go a little higher. Sometimes take a little bit off just as a reward. But I think that your idea of holding the short position, certainly from that much, much lower level, I, I wouldn't want to change that at all. Because to get back in, you, I don't know when you're going to get back into that level. And you probably wouldn't want to get in if it went back to that level. So, yeah, I'm just going to suggest Keep that and just if you want, think about maybe rewarding yourself and then actually you make a mental note and say, I'm getting out here and then you put SPXU. Where would I actually put that money back if I wanted to? Do? And then name a, name a price. You know, it's a 22, maybe a 20, 20.60. 20 you say, you know what, maybe I can put that back. But I the, the decision is that everything now is looking very negative. Any big strike, even yesterday's rebound, if today was a follow through up 200 points, I'd still be saying to, to my, my, my subscribers, we've got a huge cash position. I want you to keep that cash position. It is cash is the position. It is a serious position. I don't mess around with it. So all I'm saying to you is that at this particular point, the prudent thing is to say, I want to keep my core position. Ah, maybe you want to trade around a little bit if you want to, but holding is is not a bad thing either so i hope that helps you oh and, and the question is that you want to know where i thought the s p would go as i say um the 50 percent level it was 35 percent back in going to the march 2020 low that felt horrible but look at the speed it was six weeks whoosh we went from february uh five, four weeks february at 33 93 down to the low of 21 91 so for, for us, for subscribers, we've kept our long position in the diamonds that, were, that was bought in that period. Um, but uh, in the shorter term, we're just treating everything as short term trades. So that's the only suggestion I'm saying to you. Maybe a little bit off to reward yourself. Try to keep that core position. I hope that helps you. Thank you very much for calling. So, uh, folks, a question came in. Can I look at the SMHs? Yes, the SMHs. Um, down sharply, down 10 at 206.27. To, to me, this has been the big clue all along that if the semiconductors, which, you know, I talk about crude oil as being for 120 years, crude oil has been the generator, the engine for the American, for the world economy, but especially the American economy. And and low oil prices has been even, even more important. But as long as we got into the latter part of the 20th century or the 1900s, the semiconductor chips became the engine for the economic fuel, a, a different kind of fuel, but nevertheless, it was the 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 the, um, the, the fuel, the electronic. Let's call it the electronic fuel, and and that's and that's what we're looking at right now. The SMH has made a double top high of 318, January high, and it's trading now at uh, 206. I mean, 108 point. That's yeah. You know, that's a 30 something percent decline, and I don't see us alleviating that uh, at this particular point. And the big, actually, let me let me talk about this for the moment. The way I'm looking at the semiconductors is that when finally the chips come on on track, are we going to have a glut? And will that be when the market, when the general economy is slowing down? So now not only do we have a glut, but we don't have all the buyers that were there say, all right, well, hold off. We don't, we're going to retract that. And does that turn out to be exactly like the job situation where we're looking at uh, just everybody look, there were jobs being, being uh, advertised, job wanted ads. 
Um, and people were deciding not to go back to work because the, the, the unemployment rate is so low, and yet people were not filling those jobs. And all of a sudden, when they really need to fill the jobs, are we looking at the same thing as, the, as, as in the semiconductor industry? Then all of a sudden, those jobs aren't available. Is that what the Fed is going to do? So all I can say here is that um, the, the cycle of uh, demand and supply could, could backfire on itself. So finally you get the supply, but the demand just suddenly f falters. And that's the reason why for uh, that's the reason why I would say that even in a case where you've got um, the, the markets getting so oversold under any metric, technically uh, so many stocks are oversold that there should be some kind of a decent multi-week rally when we get it and how we get it. Maybe all it's saying is it's a technical oversold condition. So that's the reason why for Marvin, I say you've got to keep your core position. If you want to trade around it just a little bit, you know, you know just taking a little bit off, that's one thing. But I, I, you know, what we're doing is the exact opposite. We're trading on the long side, uh, trying to garner some profits because when we want to do, I haven't gone back into the DOG for a long time. That would be one to one short to down. Just sitting there with the one to one short would be fine. And then you can trade around it. So that's it. And all I can say is that within this context, you're looking at uh, oil pulling back quite sharply for oil down to at 113, but it's not a major sell-off. Looking at the dollar, look at this, the dollar's pulling back some. It's down 46 ticks at 104.70, but the high was in the 105s. 104, it's not a big deal. Um, it's still closer to the highs. If you look at the EUR, USD, uh, the EUR, and look at that, a nice bounce. But look at that arch formation. It says, wow, to, at 1.04, to break into the nine period moving average of 1.053 and then test the 1.056 level, um, that's going to be um, the resistance that we'd be looking at. If you start to see the euro trading at 1.060 uh, at some point in the, in, within the next three to five sessions, that's going to be a big difference. Look at the USD JPY. This is the, the yen. It made a peak C, just like the, the, the um, alternate count. If this can't be an alternate, it can't be an alternate count. I, oh, I have to, I'm going to take a moment. It's not technical Friday today. Tomorrow is, but I'm going to do some technical work to show you about the chapter. It's simply start how many, so many times it's worked. Recycle. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, so just uh, before I forget, I want you to show we spoke about this yesterday. In fact, for a few days now, I've spoken about the XLF, the, the SB Financial and why under these circumstances when for so long when the yields were rallying you saw some fabulous action in the financials and why i said something so different this time that i don't want to be long any of the financials uh we we, we had huge uh, success with bank of america over all the years we just go in and stay for long along for six months or even a year and then get out and do it again uh, this is something so different that you're looking at, look at that monthly candle. Look at that big red candle. Well, the monthly is only half done, two weeks, right? We've got another a, a couple of weeks to go. Uh, this is something has to happen really soon in the financials. So that's the reason why I would say that you've got to respect this. And, and cash, as I say, is, is really a position. Why? Because it's going to allow you, when we finally get everything sorted out, to, to selectively uh, go long. We're going to be looking at certain positions that during this whole fiasco, some stocks are actually holding pretty well. And are they saying that we are the ones to lead the next move up? When will that next move up be? So it's just really nice to be able to take your time and get ready for, for, for any circumstance. Now, the other thing that I'm looking at is the RTH, which is the... Um, this is the Van Eck retail ETF, 20% is Amazon. Look, it hasn't yet. It could still do it. But so far, it hasn't taken out the low of May the 20th of 144.85. Today, it's 148.50, down 3.80, looking ugly. Hasn't done it yet. But that's what I'm saying, that there are some stocks that are defying uh, gravity just a little bit, uh, and we'll see if they can do that. Amazon, which I've been negative for quite some time, saying I think Amazon needs a big digestive phase. Wow, is this a digestive phase? Uh, we're looking in the, from the 180s down to the 102 right now. Um, in the H pattern, hasn't taken out the left side. Look, look at the XRT. This is the um, S&P retail ETF equal wages, so Amazon doesn't distort. And it's gone all the way. 58 was the round number low on the 23rd of May. Now it's at 59.57. The day is young. Anything can happen. So uh, we've got it. We've, I, I'm just saying I respect the markets uh, sector by sector. Look at the SLX weakness. Look at this. Taking out the left side row, 54.46, the 12th of May. Runs all the way to peak E in the Chapman Wave in the 65 area. Here it is at 53.50. A leg B in the weekly chart, almost a re reversal arch formation in the week, in the weekly chart, and a big turnaround. And I've got it as a peak C in the monthly chart. So once again, we're looking at uh, the different sectors. I haven't done this for a little while. MJ, which is the S, this is the MJ alternative harvest ETF cannabis sector, trading at five dollars and ninety cents in February of 2021. It was at 34.28 uh, you know when a sector is out of favor it can stay out of favor for quite some time uh, we're also looking at um, the question came in could I could I do a little work on the um, what do I expect what's my anticipation for the TLT let's get to the TBT first look the TBT has just started a leg D to the upside that is the ultra short Lehman 20 year treasury bond ETF and here it is in leg D at 28.95 D. 
Uh, D is when you expect other things could happen that don't have to, but you got the last peak D uh, in the 27th. So a huge pullback to the 24, huge pullback, meaning it hadn't had pullbacks like that for a while. So this is the TBT. Where would I expect it to go? I drawn this in some time ago. The ultra short Lehman 20 year treasury bond ETF had a peak, a little doji candle uh, right here on the 8th, um, that's August of 2019. It just stalled for a moment and that high was 30.24. We're at 29.56 already today. This month, that's where we've been, and it's only in leg C. So that's just saying this right now, you're looking at basically yields. Look at this. It's almost the same pattern as the TNX. X, there it is. Um, peak D, pulling back a little bit today. This is the 10-year yield down 33 ticks at 33.62. Made a high of 34.93, I think it was. What is that? 34... Point eighty three yesterday, and um, it went. Is this going to be like a leg F to the upside, or is this? Giant? Oh, it didn't do that. The brand new recycle. So let me go back to what we were looking at before. Now, can I remember what we were looking at before? I said that we would look at it in greater detail. Oh no, I don't remember what it was. Let me see if I've got it on the list yet. No, I think it's many many stocks away. Ah. Oh. What was I talking about when I said I'd get back because it's got a chapter eight potential instant restart? Um, yes, I did. I looked at all the different. Uh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Was it a TLT? Maybe it was a TLT. Oh, no, no, it had to be a TBT. Now, I can't remember. Sorry about that. Um, but what I, w I was looking at is in one of the, one of the uh, I can't find it. Sorry about that. But there was one that it had an alternate count. And I said, oh, was it the dollar? Was it the dollar? Was it the dollar? No, it wasn't. All right, I'm not going to fuss with that. But there was one that had an alternate count that if I used a little mini uh, PD, two bars, and then it made a new high, I would get an account that would allow for an alternate account to go even higher. So I can't remember what that was, so that doesn't matter. Look at the um, H, um, HP. No, H. Oh, well, what's it? The um, Any of the jobs companies, um, forgetting now the name, usually I just have these at the tip of my tongue, and I'm forgetting it right now. Uh, HPI? No, it's not HPI. Or it doesn't matter. HPI is um, Hannes Brands. Oh, that looks ugly. Down at 971. Doesn't matter. All right, so I said I'd look at some of the stocks. Let's go to Google. Uh, Google right now is trading. Uh, and here's one that is holding from the left side low that was made. May the. Oh, yes. I, I looked at this last night. It was very interesting. Look, Google. G, I'm looking at Google. This is uh, Alphabet C stock. And this is not the one that people trade. I think they trade Google L. And this is the low of 2044 on the 24th of May. Runs up to a high at peak B, uh, 2387 on the 6th of June. And then what does it do? It comes back down and it's holding very nicely, even though it's down today. So I'm looking at each, each stock separately here and saying, in this environment, what are you telling me? Are you, are you, do you have enough... Um, do you have enough strength to tell me I can start playing that there'd be a low sometime and this will be the area? Or are you just so vulnerable, like an Amazon is still so vulnerable that I can't really get a sense of that? I can get a sense here with Google. I can just say the whole 2000 area is important. I've got to go to, um, yeah, we've got Bob in Naples. Bob, how are you? Uh, Bob, you there. Yes, Basil, good morning. Yes, hi, how are you? I'm fine. You, you want I don't to look know at if you remember me. I used to be up in New Jersey. I've listened to you for a long time, many oh, years. Bob, I have a lot of Bob. respect for you. I love Bob, you. We've got, a, we, we got a break com we got a break coming up. I'm going to talk to you straight after the break. Yes, I do. If you want to look at Triple M and forget that as soon as you can take, that was like a good 
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Dow's on 840. Let's go to Bob and Naples. Hi, Bob. So you wanted to look at? A long-term chart of uh, 3M. So I've got a monthly, I don't know if you can see my charts right now. I've got a monthly chart of 3M going from the low of 2009 uh, around about in the, I guess it was in the 40s, maybe the 30s. Screams up to 259.77, January of 2018, and that was it. And this is a multinational conglomerate, abrasives, adhesives, electronic components, or the works. So um, I'm just going to say that the way I'm looking at it, it's got the arch formation from a peak E. It's got a, um, a left side, right side price time match. And that says the 114.04 low of March of 2020 could very well become a target if it takes out, it's at 130 right now, if it takes out 124 key support going all the way back, uh, actually uh, 134 was the low, I'm making it 124, that's a trend line support. If it takes that out, then 114 would be the target by July or August of this year. Um, so, so to change that trajectory, it would have to have a rally that holds and sustains a move into the 138, 142 area, certainly by the end of June, the beginning of July. That will say, whew, maybe it saved the day. I hope that helps you. I, I mention it because, you know, it's such a large company. And I know a lot's changed over 20 years, but it's still a large company. Um, and, and I find it worrisome. It looks to me like it could end up at $100. 
It does look worrisome because it hasn't participated at all since it made its high uh, back at uh, the last high, not the major high, but the last high was June of uh, a year ago, exactly a year ago uh, in the right. uh, in the 208s. That does worry me. You know what? Today, tomorrow's technical Friday. Let's do, I'll do a little more work technically on it, but I think your point is being made that it's one of the big conglomerates and it's acting terribly. So thank you so much for calling, Bob. I'll, I'll go into this nice a little bit. I'll make a note you, right there. Thank you for talking, Bye -bye. and I always appreciate it. And I do remember you. So, folks, the Dow is down 105. It's trying to find.